Welcome to The Power of Dance, Episode 3, Dance in Education. I am delighted to be joined yet again by the incredible Dame Darcy Bustle and Dr. Peter Lovett, aka Dr. Dance. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of dance and movement in education. We will also be joined by a special guest speaker, Kelly Dendy, who is head of Didi Mix for Schools and will talk us through implementing dance fitness as part of PE. Welcome back, Darcy and Peter. It's great to have you here again. Hope you've been enjoying the conversations as much as I have. Um, this week's episode is Dance in Education, which I probably think we could have an entire series on, but we'll try and keep it into one episode for now. Um, I'd like to start by asking you both, what do you think of the current setup and the accessibility of dance, in dance and movement in education today, in schools today? And that Darcy? Yes, well, um, fortunately there are some dance, but usually it materializes within clubs after school. Um, in, and there are some schools that do an amazing job with dance, but of course it's only open for kids that are interested in dance. And a lot of the kids won't, wouldn't bother even trying it out as an exercise of any kind. Um, but it basically is far too little. There isn't enough variety there for kids to enjoy dance. Um, and, if, and, and if it is existing in clubs, it would be very specialized as well. So we're talking things like either a ballet class or a contemporary class or jazz or hip hop or street, which usually are the most common ones, the hip hop and street. Um, and of course that, um, you know, excludes a lot of kids uh, because they wouldn't be maybe interested in those certain styles. True, and Peter, what, Peter, what have you seen in the education system today with dance and movement? Well, the education system today, there are some, as Darcy said, there are some really good examples of places where dance happens in some schools. And when schools introduce dance, then it can lead to some fantastic benefits for people. I think for me, the, the major drawback for me is one, is that dance isn't compulsory. And I think dance should be compulsory. And I think it should be inclusive and by making it compulsory it would make it more inclusive you know we have a big drive about stem subjects the science technology engineering and maths with a drive to bring those subjects on in our schools and i think the arts and dance in particular should be a really important part of that too so i think it's fantastic that we have these specialized dance clubs which go as a as an, as a, as an, an aside to the dance to education, but I think we should be integrating it much more holistically as part of the general in, uh, educational process. And I think one of the problems of that is that, you know, we have you know, science and technology are seen as the kind of top level of the academic hierarchy. And then there's the humanities and then below that are the arts. And within the arts, certainly in the education system, then there's a hierarchy within the arts such that dance appears somewhere close to the bottom of that. And it's seen as a female subject. A lot of people who take part in dance are female. And that might be one of the reasons why in a kind of patriarchal society, then we, we make dance to have this low value. I think we should flip that on its head. I think we should see dance as being as important as physics and as maths. And I think it should become part of the core part of a curriculum so that everybody engages with it. Because the benefits then we get through dance fundamentally change people. Now, this isn't to train people like Darcy to be Darcy Bustle, because Darcy is one in a million, uh, probably one in a billion people, of uh, being that extraordinary dancer. I don't think we're trying to train that when we introduce dance in schools. What we're trying to do is to say, let's bring dance in, because it leads to so many benefits across the whole person and across the whole curriculum that it has value in and of itself. I think, Darcy, you've been talking quite a lot um, in many different situations about the importance of getting it on the curriculum more often than not. Um, we've seen in private schools and state schools. So what's been your experience so far and what have you come up against? Um, I think that the first uh, impact um, you suddenly come across, um, especially with the head teachers, is um, that dance is only going to be uh, interesting for the kids if it's street or hip, hip hop. Um, and so, you know, very narrow uh, uh, 
view of what dance is and, and the variety that's out there and, and not appreciating the variety. And that's really disappointing. And also, as, as you said, Peter, that it, it's not seen as a subject that uh, could be as, as valuable as all the sciences or geography or, you know, or maths or things like that. Um, and, and to realize that it has great value. And a, a lot of the schools, when they take it on um, as, a, as part of physical education, not as a club, and that it's there for every kid and it's inclusive, then they're suddenly woken up to, oh my goodness, look at the kids, I've never seen them so alive, so active, uh, so engaged, so stimulated. And then also uh, we've experienced when they then go into the classroom and have to focus, the attention is extraordinary and all the head teachers turn around and, and are you know, quite surprised with how effective it's been. So it, it is, it's really interesting. People are still quite naive to all the attributes of dance, even though they've seen so much of the science behind it. Absolutely. I mean, if it's okay with you both, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker today to tell us a little bit more about the DD Mix for Schools program, which um, Kelly Dendy is the head of schools. And she has written this program with DD Mix to make sure that it's part of PE. So if we can get Kelly online. So Kelly Dendy, just for those who may have missed the beginning, is the head of schools for DD Mix for Schools. And she has written the curriculum for our dance fitness program, DD Mix. And here is Kelly to tell us a little bit more about it. So I think if you could just give us an outline of the actual program, that would be great. Hi. Um, so yeah, so we obviously, like you've talked about previously, we were just really keen to create a program that basically was really easy to deliver but engaged all children no matter where they've come from what abilities they have and also the teachers because obviously um you know primary school teachers they have to teach all of the subjects often so it is important you know when they look at dance sometimes or p in you know as a whole it's sometimes they're a bit you know a bit worried um, to tackle that and it can result either that they don't teach it or that they might teach it and it becomes um, slightly you know lacking pace or and so they want the confidence basically to deliver something that they really believe in so we were really keen to look into that you know how can we make that happen and and that's when um, you know the DD mix the diverse dance mix um, movements are a great basis because it's that foundation those you know blocks that they can build upon so they can you know taste them they're just sample flavors and then they can go off and have the confidence to create their own um, and what we've done is we've created games that um, give the children the opportunity to have their own you know it empowers them to have their own experimentation on it um, still in a fast-paced environment because it is a game to them so it's fun and also it's fun for the teachers to deliver too because they can see the concept without having to, they can get involved as much as possible. So for those with a lot of confidence, they can really, you know, get in there and do it with the children. And for those that might not be so confident at the beginning, can direct their children. And then the, the children are still going off. Um, they are, you know, getting the activity that they need. Um, but most importantly, they'll be introduced to a genre. They won't be told what to do. They'll give their chance to have the ownership and create movements of their own. Some children will um, name the movement after themselves. Um, some children may name a movement after something that we cannot relate to. So they might say the wiggle jiggle and we'll be like, brilliant. Okay, everyone do the wiggle jiggle and having that whole class environment all doing that movement they've chosen empowers them and then the the game would be fast paced and then when the um, movements from the genre from DD Mix when we introduce them then the children are like I can have a go and they will attack it with all of their energy and it doesn't matter how they're doing it because they might have seen the school teacher copying their movements and looking you know not what minding what they look like and um, so they're like well if they can do it i can do it too so i think it is important that the regular school teacher delivers it kelly can i ask a question yes yeah, sorry i'm going on no no it's been really interesting now <laughs> Peter was talking earlier on about how difficult it is sometimes to convince head teachers of the value of dance and bringing it in i mean yeah. clearly when you talk about it you that you come to life well it comes to life how did you convince 
those schools to take on DD Mix? And secondly, what kind of impact have you seen of the teacher telling you about as a consequence of in engaging with DD Mix in the classroom? I think basically it was getting into the schools and giving them a, a free sample, a free taster, because as soon as they see it and have it see it in action and have a go themselves, it is that the confidence is built. So um, assemblies, that was a really popular choice was because there's no pressure in an assembly because the whole school is standing on their feet. So even, you know, Joe Bloggs in the corner might be like, oh, but once they see all the children standing around them, they might have a little boogie and then they're, they're actually, okay, I can do this. And so I think that was a great way of convincing them because it was no, there was no pressure and they could see then the joy that the children got and all of the staff in the school. Um, so that was very, very helpful. And it's, you know, um, just giving them the chance to have a go all the different moves so and also to do nice and quick and not be there for a long long time basically yeah sorry uh, what was the other question oh the other question is of what kind of what feedback have you had from school teachers about the impact of it in the classroom after you've left so because we deliver um, training sessions to the teachers in the form of an inset or a twilight um, we encourage all of the teachers to come in so we train them all up even the dinner ladies sometimes so they can give them a go and what we've had the feedback we've had is the fact that it is for everyone because of the way it's formed they can take as much or as little of the lesson plans because they're very detailed but they're also broken down so that you could um, for anyone to do and I think the teachers like the fact that they could they could take in two movements for example take it into a class but then the children could then take off and take more movements from it so there's no pressure of having to be super over prepared for a class and they've said it's created a bit of a family network in within their school because they all come together especially with the games because the games can be transferred into the playground and into um, team building within the staff as well so they've found it as a little bit it's fun and it's it's there it's allowed to be fun it's in education but it's still fun so i think it's brought them all together and 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 they can then perform and do their own little um festivals within in the school that's no pressure again and then all the children can get involved rather than it being a club where only the the specific dancers can get involved so it's been yeah it, it's level to out i think could you um, just run us through how a DDMix class session would work? How it would work in the actual PE lesson? Because it's written for PE, isn't it? It's not, like we keep saying, it's not part of a club. It's written for PE, but if you could just do a basic outline of how that lesson would work for a teacher and the pupils. Yeah, of course. So um, it works just like a normal PE lesson. So from a teacher's point of view, they've got their lesson plan, which contains their lesson objective still. So following the national curriculum guidelines. Um, so they'll come in and we, the most important thing is that we get the children moving very, very quickly. So we start off with a warm up. Now that warm up is very consistent. So it's a nice part of the class to have that's the same for a whole unit. So when I say units, the six week block, um, and that's lovely for the child because they have that rep repetition that they'll come into the class and have that same same thing each week then straight away we um, play a game activity that will either introduce a genre or will develop a skill so again it's a fun way for a teacher to easily deliver a skill because if you read on a lesson plan that you need to deliver how to teach speed or direction or canon you know that can be quite terrifying but when it's in the form of a game it's something the children pick off and then they can tell you um so that game for example if it was introducing the genre like i uh, discussed earlier that might be giving them a chance to hear the music give their take put their hand up and again nothing is wrong so if you are for example teaching a hand drive class and uh you listen to the music but then a, a child would introduce maybe you know a a movement of the time you know so we had our flossing recently well maybe not so recently but quite recently we don't say no to that because that's a chance for the child to feel empowered and the same with if it's a completely random movement we say yes and then that keeps everyone you know we've got our blood pumping we're really ready and then next is when we bring in the dd mix movement so again i said there are about four key movements um per genre and then we just simply um bring them in and at that point you know the children are ready to go and then from there again it, we can then let the children um start to create their own 
So with the activities at the beginning of every class, that's each, each um, class will have a different activity. But again, they're pocketing movements that they've created themselves. And then when they add it to the DD Mix movements, you've got this lovely um, sequence of movements that not only is you know, great to keep them moving the whole time with not too much static time, but again, they've created their own. So that power and ownership they have together as a class because again sometimes I think in um, in classes that everyone listens to the teacher but not necessarily to the rest of the children so this gives them a chance to all work together so and then they'll end up with a cool down because obviously we might have got them all <laughs> hyped up but then we like to cool them down so again like with the warm-up we've got the cool down again has that um, continue I can't say that word you know the um, consistency um, to it and then you know it gives them a chance to uh, wind down before they go into their next class it's um sorry kelly i'd love to ask as well what the nice thing is also what they build on what skills they're building on not just learning lots of different flavors of national styles but yeah. they're also learning those skills could you just mention those over the weeks what they're yeah. accomplishing Exactly. So basically, um, when we take a genre, it might last three to six weeks, but within that, they might take a skill. So for example, if they are learning about dynamics, they're learning about the speed, the energy, the flow. And what we want to do is so that they actually can talk to you about the dynamics, that's when they're brought into the game. So it's something very fun. They'll play with lots of different types of music, get the chance to move different body parts so they can really and listen to a certain piece of music and they can tell you what the speed is like and how they move their body that way. And then that's built in to then when we bring it into the DD mix and movements, for example, you might have the Arabic that's loads of brilliant dynamics in there, but then they make up their own movements. Now they might choose a smooth movement. They might choose a jerky movement and they have to identify that, but add it in to um, either you know meshing it with the key movements or building and that's worked on so that they've not only you know as we keep saying they they keep moving they've got a flavor they've got some lovely movements but most importantly they are building that skill and that's the same with if they're working with you know as i said speed direction canon retrograde all these things that when you say to a you know a primary school teacher at the beginning they would say, how can I deliver that? But the whole point is we're trying to make it easy for them and also to make all the children absolutely love it. And it is wonderful to see every child, the boys and the girls, just really, you know, making an effort and they're not worried and they're working together. And, and again, with our games, there there's a lot of games that are based on um, letting them lead, letting them follow, letting them model. So they see the importance of every role as well. So that's, you know, another nice thing. So they're not arguing about, oh, I picked this movement to use in the, in the sequence. So again, it's not wasting time. It's just keeping the movement and getting those creative juices flowing at the same time. And, and how old are they? How old are the range of children that you can use DD Mix in schools for, with? So at the moment, we have the programme that runs all the way through primary and then up to um, Key Stage 3. So, and then, because obviously from Key Stage 4, they can then use enrichment programmes. So they can still use DD Mix, but they can use it as more of an enrichment activity to go alongside. But at the moment, they've got it all the way through up until they start their GCSEs within the yeah. curriculum. That's great. And do you get the same engagement with the older children as you do with the younger children? You just have to um, pitch it differently, obviously. Um, and that's what I think we're really keen to see is the more children that are using it throughout primary school, it will be within their, you know, that will just become the norm. Um, so for our schools that have had it for years, um, that's what's going to be really interesting to see in the future if, if that gives that extra push because it doesn't, you know, no one set, you know, there's no not preconceptions about it because they, they know everyone can do it. And when we teach it, at the moment in the senior schools um it is it's taught in a slightly different way there's a little bit more emphasis on the skills obviously but again we try to mix it up and keep it because you want to keep the activity happening um and you know hopefully in a few more years time we'll have even more boost from the children that are doing it primarily they're doing it all the time so they want to take it along brilliant thank you so thank much you. for joining us kelly it's lovely Thank to have you, you here and what we'll do is we'll make sure we write down all the contact details at the bottom of this podcast 
and on the video on YouTube. So if anyone wants to get in touch with Kelly or find out more about the programme, we'll make sure all the links are available for you. So thanks for being here and see you Thank soon. You. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 <laughs> Brilliant. So that's really interesting to hear how the actual programme works. Um, Peter, we'd love to hear from you. How was it when you were at school? What, did you have dance at school? What was your experience? Oh, um, well, I was very lucky at school that we had a school dance group, but it was separate from the main curriculum. Uh, we had a dance group called Colour Supplement. And at one point I was the only boy in Colour Supplement and there were a few hundred girls in it. I've got some photos somewhere of, uh, of, of that. Um, and that was just wonderful for me. I, I absolutely loved that, that way to express myself and to feel differently. And that really, I think, I'd done some ballet before I joined Colour Supplement and I'd, I'd enjoyed dancing. So I, I knew I had a love of dance, but it was fantastic to have that opportunity. One of the problems, of course, of being at school, this is in the 1970s, was that you know, it was unusual for boys to dance and there was a fair amount of bullying and name calling and all that traditional stuff that you associate with male dancers. And that went on very explicitly. It was the kind of thing that nobody really tried to prevent it. But what's amazing now is I think now we have all this evidence and the scientific evidence shows that when we get people moving in schools, then it, it enhances a whole set of stuff to do with the children's learning and with their social bonding. It was great to hear Kelly talking then about the kind of family centred and the bonding, because we know from the scientific evidence that when we get kids moving in schools, it makes them like each other more. It makes them trust each other more. They feel more similar to one another and they show more pro-social behaviour with one another, which are all some of the bedrocks of learning. We also know that when you move your body, it changes the way that you think and solve problems. And of course, in a, in a school setting, you want people to think and solve problems in different ways and to learn in different ways. Of course, we know that moving is fantastic for our heartbeat and our heartbeat changes our evaluations of things. It changes how we learn. We don't want to sit for too long in schools. And the fourth thing is that emotionally, it's like a cathartic experience when we dance, uh, as we've discussed previously. But of course, when we apply that in an education setting, it's fantastic. Now, I'm just reaching over here because I've got this book here. I've been very lucky to travel around and meet some different schools around the world who have started using movement like DD Mix into the school curriculum. And they've seen extraordinary benefits. And I would love in a future episode to invite on one or some of those people from those schools to have a chat. But I've got this book here. Um, for those that are listening on the podcast, it's called A Moving Child is a Learning Child. And it's a fantastic book written by Jill uh, Connell and Cheryl McCarthy. And it's about how the body teaches the brain to think. And it's a whole book about primary education and about how, what happens when we introduce movement into the classroom and how that changes all of the things we're talking about as scientists. So uh, why I'm so excited about is this link between dance practitioners such as DD Mix, you know, the schools who are taking this on, the scientists who are looking into the research in this area and really trying to understand how we can build up a child's learning by using movement. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I think we should all be doing more of that, I think, in schools. There, and there Darcy, is. Oh, sorry. Go on. Sorry, no, no, I was just adding to that because um, my fear, obviously, is how do we engage with children because their attention span is becoming shorter and shorter um, just because the amount of stimulation you know they get on screen and of course as we've seen in these times of lockdown how much schooling is now done online um, in front of a screen we're expected all now to have laptops and everybody's uh, doing most of their education within their laptop, <laughs> that space, which is so confining and unhealthy for a child. As you said, um, they need to move and they shouldn't be sitting for too long. But my also my concern was also then how does physical education come up to the same level as stimulation as they get off their computer and all, all the exciting things they see on the internet and all the positives from it. And how do we transfer that into movement and keeping them engaged and stimulated to the same level? And that physical education has to adapt. We have to move on. And it can't be from what I remember as well in the 70s, uh, being a whole lot of exercises and climb a rope and uh, do a couple of runs on the spot or, you know, it has to be more stimulating for the child's mind and for their focus to, uh, so they don't get bored. 
basically. And that's why I really feel that dance has such a place in physical education because it's so changeable. The complexity of the steps, adding them together, the kids have to really think, the variety as we know, especially with national dancers and you're looking across the world at how everybody dances in, in different for different reasons and in different styles. And I think that's a really great part of education that we're slightly missing um, and we can develop free dance. Well, I think you're absolutely right, Darcy. And one of the contacts we had is with a school um, in Adelaide called Wilderness. And what they're doing there in some of their English classes, so this is a pure English class, and between every 20 minutes and every 45 minutes, they're introducing a form of dancing into the classroom itself. Mm -hmm. So they might have a, you know, a, a group of children who are working, they might get them moving at the beginning of their, of their learning experience, and then they do 10 minutes or 15 minutes of sitting down and doing what they're doing, and then they get them up and they're moving around again, and either work in moving in a coordinated, synchronized way, or moving in an improvised way, or spontaneously, and then they sit down again. And what they found is that their level of concentration, um, and their group togetherness, and their problem solving, all of those skills become enhanced. Now, of course, what's amazing about that is that they're not taking all of the children out of the classroom halfway through English to go and do a PE session. They've integrated the movement into the learning um, of core subjects like English or physics or maths. And then, of course, you can have the more intensive program outside of the classroom. But I think weaving movement into every aspect of the learning environment, so it becomes, it's literally woven in, so you don't really notice it. It's just there. You know, and I think that that's, so it doesn't become an other, it's a part of what we're trying to do. I think that's a great thing as well, is that dance and movement doesn't need any equipment. The school doesn't need to purchase any specific equipment. You can just push the chairs back and get up and move. But how do we break down the barriers to make it a more accessible programme so that schools are more open to taking on such a programme and to, and to incorporate dance into the everyday life of a school child? Well, I guess if they were to see the benefits of it, so if we could say to them, look, you know, if your problem is that your young people don't concentrate for a full hour, or if you've noticed that after you know, three hours of the learning environment, they've started, their, their attention is drifting, and we know we can use particular forms of dance to address some of those particular issues. So it almost becomes like a prescription. We say, okay, let's take what your problem is, and we say, Let, let's create a movement uh, prescription for that, and then we can give them the movement prescription um, that, that's tailored to their particular needs. And then I think if we can demonstrate the value of dance and movement to their particular needs in terms of the children learning and concentrating or bonding, then I think they will be more likely to adopt movement as an integral part of the learning process. It is also, isn't it, um, what I've noticed, the uh, People's Association with Dance again is specialized and also they think it's very static that it takes time to learn a movement but of course um, to get the attributes it doesn't have to be specialized and I think that's a message that hasn't got across that um, you don't have to specialize and be excellent at dance to get those attributes and it can have much more variety and it can be really simple to engage with that child and to get all those um, coordination skills, you know, memory skills. Uh, um, it's, 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 you know, it's endless, isn't it? The, the appreciation of music and rhythms. Um, you know, you don't have to be an expert dancer to get those attributes. And I think we've got to break that down and simplify that dance doesn't come in as a professional, vocational, you know, club-based thing. It can be there and it can be part of physical education. And that's what we found is one of the hardest things to get across is to understand the data is still there even if the kid is doing nice simple steps you know it doesn't have to be complex and it can be full-on energetic physical activity that they're really burning and, and getting out of breath at the same time and to see the enjoyment with them getting out of breath because it's so tough at the moment where kids I mean the data is that they only get out of breath for 10 minutes a week in state schools and and you just go what no no that can't possibly be but it's true because they're all lining up to take in an activity or like hitting a ball with a bat but they all have to line up because the classes are so big but of course the, the wonderful thing about dance is you can do it all together and it can be 30 kids all engaged and all 
doing the same amount of activity in one in one 10 minute go you know and there aren't that many activities within the PE curriculum that are, are that inclusive for the whole class because you have you know the team sports which are obviously great as well but as winners and losers or there are the individual things like the long jump like you said you queue up for ages you do your one long jump and that's your PE lesson done but this is just a collective and surely we can get the schools to see that this is really good for the children's mental health, for coming together, for working together, and then being better prepared for what's coming next, the next lesson, what happens in the future. Mm. We must be able to see that on, on the mind. Mm. Yes, Peter, in, in your book, The Dance Cure, um, have you come up with a lot of those solutions? <laughs> Well, we have in the dance cure. So in the dance cure, there's a whole set of different solutions for different types of problems you might want to encounter. Um, all around learning and interpersonal engagement, whether you're a shy person or whether you're a vivacious, outgoing person, uh, whether you want to calm down and concentrate or whether you want to think freely and be super creative in your thoughts and a bit wild and improvised. So we have a lots of different of them. So yeah thank you. If, you if you want to have a look at the dance cure then there are some there too there's lots of different solutions uh, depending on the problem and in all seriousness i mean this is um it really is the case i believe i've spent over 20 years carrying out research in this area at the university level is that when people move they really do improve so the saying you know you move you improve is absolutely central and we tend to forget that, you know, we come together now and we sit in front of a computer or we sit behind a desk or we're trying to be controlled by our, our government or our environment. You know, I mean, government in a small way in terms of the governing body of a school or the people who are kind of trying to control a large group of people. And we restrict movement and we be, then we become to this uh, group of people who only really engage in very functional movements. We only do enough movement that's required for the job we're expected to do. You know, um, in all kinds of places, in restaurants, in shops, uh, park keepers only do a, the required amount of movement to get their job done. And I think we need to be doing more movement. When we're walking down the street, we could walk with a groove and have a bit of a boogie. We could stand at a bus stop and shake our, our shoulders. We should be moving much more freely because when we move more freely, then these amazing things happen. And I would love to get to a point in the school where we could move more in a school environment or in a university environment um, as, as, we're, as we're learning and those things. So yes, if you want some tips and tricks, then have yeah. a look at the dance cure because it's, it's packed full it, of them. It, it is brilliant. It is brilliant what you've been able to uh, tell everybody that there are solutions for every, every individual to be able to participate in dance. And it, it is what we forget. It does break down a lot of in inhibitions. And I think especially with kids and their confidence, dance is a wonderful way of being able to have fun together and interpret music differently, uh, create, have your imagination really working hard to think about movements. But as you also said, how we limit our movements to what we only need for every day. We forget that movements a massive improvement for motoring skills for children. Yeah. And they, you know, now they forget how to, they're not even able to walk backwards or you know, how even to skip was such a natural thing for a child to do in a playground. It's just eliminated. You just don't see kids doing that. Um, I mean, there's only, of course, we we see a lot of hip hop and street in schools, but uh, and that's really exciting that you know they're really motivated by the music um, that comes from those uh, a wonderful popular popularized music. But we've got to remember that so we've got to reach a larger pool of kids. Mm -hmm. And, and as, they, as you always say, everybody's individual and they've got something different to give to a dance style and, and, and use of their imagination, uh, which is so important for a child not to forget that they have that. Absolutely. And Darcy, I think you probably get asked quite a lot, you know, why, why, didn't you, why haven't you brought a ballet programme into schools? What made you want to do DD Mix and the diversity of DD Mix and put that into schools rather than your, your specialised training? Um, well, again, uh, ballet does quite well with girls and, and um, we saw, I mean, I, I see so many friends of mine that are teachers and, and they excel really well at teaching classical ballet, but mainly to girls. So I constantly kept thinking 
of dance styles that were more inclusive for you know for every sex um, and it was really important that the variety was there as well so that we were reaching more children because you go into schools now and they're of every nationality and I was suddenly got just so keen that we were we were missing a trick here that we should use all those wonderful national styles from around the world to engage with kids because all of these schools are full of every nationality. And so we are, you know, we're sort of narrowing our market where we could just open it like that. And then every kid I think feels that then they have something to give. Um, it, it's really hard. Um, I mean, I, I, Ballet wasn't my first love at all. You know, I love tap dancing and I just watched that from the movies. So when I went into ballet, I, I felt really odd and slightly uh, constipated because everything was on the spot and, and it was all about turnout and, and, and placement and things like this. And I was a bit of a wild child and I wanted to be free. And, and as, as you uh, put it, Peter, you know, um, I have a bit of my own in, input into the movement. And, and I felt really quite restrictive when I first started to ballet. But then slowly and slowly I had the appreciation and learning um, more of the skills and what I could achieve was then suddenly very exciting, but it did take me some time. So I did want to interact with children instantly. What kind of dance styles was instantly interact with a child? And it often was the ones that they didn't, um, they didn't associate with popularized music. We wanted very much to think of just around the world in those styles. And then some, of course, the iconic eras was, was great as well, because a lot of people had those images of films or musicals of, uh, you know, silhouettes of, you know, as we can all, <laughs> we all know that one uh, from the 1970s, uh, you know, John Travolta or Hairspray, you know, those wonderful moves that are iconic. Um, it's like this, you know, or this, the mashed potato, you know, the, these moves that kids, you know, will use every day without even realizing. And because they're in their psyche, they're about things they come across every day. So we just wanted to engage with them instantly and knowing that those styles would do it and it wouldn't exclude any kids at the same time. It's the fun factor, isn't it? I think if we can make it fun, it opens <sighs> the door. Entertaining yeah. is so important. Um, you're so right. Um, and and to keep them smiling from beginning to end. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is lovely to see because every time either of you have moved on the screen, you, your faces light up naturally. It's a natural instinct, isn't it? It comes alive in the same with Kelly when she was talking about the programme. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for listening. And a big thank you, as always, to Darcy and Peter and today's special guest, Kelly Dendy. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. We will make sure that all of the links to the information we've discussed will be in the descriptions below. Please do share with your friends, let us know your thoughts, and we look forward to seeing you next time for episode four. My name's Giselle Parker, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.